Hey, Anthony here from the Best in the West. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is a really special video. Um, it's some floating stairs with planters in them. If you want to see some intricate high, high end work, this is a really good video for you. I'll give you a quick backstory. Another contract reported about a week before, prior to me coming here, and they were really unhappy with it. And I would send you to my last video where I show it shows me demoing it out. You can see what it looks like, but. I don't want to waste too much time on that because I want to stick to this video. It's that good. But, um, you know, the guy who did it, you know, you got to admire, uh, you know, ambition. But the other side of that coin is the people who live here have an immaculate house and they've worked their whole life and it wasn't it wasn't going to fly. So there's two sides to it. But um, whatever it was, it was. I came and redid it. I had designed it way wider at the bottom and Javier redesigned it, which was a good move once I saw it. And when you guys see this, you're going to see the highest quality work. If you're in the concrete or you're getting in the industry or you are in the industry, this is a video for you or your homeowner. That's basically mainly what I gear it for as homeowners. I'm going to get so many uh, jobs once that people see this thing. So we demoed it out in one day. Believe it or not, this is only comes out to about five and a half yards, this whole job. And it's a five-day job. And I'll explain it because the first day we demo it, the second day we set up the, the front entry and two steps because you cannot pour it all at one pour. Then the, then we poured it the third day. Then the fourth day we set up the last two steps. And then the fifth day we pour them. So it's a five-day job, believe it or not. It's five yards. And, you, and even when you pour, you need three top-of-line finishers. There's, we put so much detail into it and so much edging. And, and we, we strip everything and face it the same day. And we wash this with top cast which a lot of states don't know what that is. It's like a, a sand finish. It exposes the sand. I'm pretty sure it probably retards about a sixteenth of an inch on the top, and then you hose it and broom it. That We wash it that day, like an hour or two later. You'll see the finish. It's just it's just an incredible finish. Other places are so far behind. I mean, we've been doing top casts out here for, I can remember, for 20, 25 years. So I brought some base in. The, the ground was... A little low and not the best soil so we're going to compact it in with this and pour on top of that it's like a hundred degrees on this day this is la county that's my buddy d right there so we got two guys milton and javier setting up and these are long days too normally if i pour like 20 yard driveway or 10 yard patio or whatever and you start pouring at seven you're gone at noon 12 31 at the latest this thing we were here till you know 334 some days it's just so much work it's it's almost hard to believe if you try and do it you'll see there's so many people who try and do this and fail there's the best in the west rig right there i'm just pulling up to pump it out but there's very few people that can do this like i was saying you won't see anyone on youtube any places doing this when you check out the end of this this is the highest end um concrete you're going to get this is what i want to represent myself as straight concrete my videos are always packed with information if you're a concrete guy or contractor you can watch west coast and see what a contractor what equipment you need what the crew looks like how they work finishing you'll see it all in this video this is a really good depiction of a very high-end company there's a setup there you see we left the the second and the or excuse me the first and the third step open because you can't strip the forms. And then Javier came up with a new way. What's really cool about these steps is the first set I did that everybody saw had an inch and a half gap where I put the strip lights. I tried to get it down to an inch, but we got it to an inch and a quarter gap because I really want to give the floating illusion where you can't see underneath. So an inch and a quarter is what we got out of it. We used a one by four, put it sideways, and we glued um, spray glued foam to it. On the bottom so you can slide it out and it came out like butter in the the planters inside the the steps what we did is we just you just put stakes on them and pull them up and we put foam around the planter too and it just pulls right up and you're gonna get to see the landscape and everything done with the plants and the planter everything I waited six days and Charles and Jonetta the homeowners they had it all the plants in and the landscapers in so you get a real good view of what it looks like this is how a custom guy operates he owns his own pump you lay it in, you put it exactly where you want. There's no buggy, there's no wheelbarrows. See, I'm ready to go. When I do high end stuff like this, I'm ready to go. And I'm going to start trying to, um, I want to reinvent myself where I do mega mansion 
entrances and I, I basically just design and do entryways you know because they're showstoppers this thing when you see it done and if you want to see what it looked like prior to me coming look at the last video I put up of when I demoed it out and it was only a week old you can see what it looked like in the way they did it this is a grand entrance we're just pulling the rebar up as we go there's so much detail and so much edging in this but you guys are gonna love the sand finish on this it's my favorite finish I've stated it before gotta have the right crew the dude who did it I could see what level he is just by looking at his work and the joints the edging I eyeballed the whole thing and he wasn't even close to being capable of doing it most guys aren't though but I mean he went for it but you know he should have brought someone out who was competent and knew how to do it in his crew so he could have pulled it off but I think he tried to do it a lot of the setup and elevations and everything himself the porch the excuse me the entry didn't drain right I mean it was just it was a mess you guys understand when you're hiring concrete guys you got to be very careful it's not like you painted the fence the wrong color and you're gonna repaint it or something I mean it's pretty catastrophic if you pay 20 grand 15 grand whatever for an entry and and the thing's totally bunk I mean the guy's broke he doesn't have any money how are you gonna rectify the situation the only way to do it is bite the bullet and just um, forget about it and hire the right guy and have him tear it out. But you don't want to go down that route. This is the first job in my whole career where I've toured somebody else's brand new workout. I usually shy away because it's always a can. It's already a can of worms. The people are already upset. The other guy screwed them. Could have been for money or level of work or whatever. So I this is the first time I've ever gone to a job where they say, "Hey, this guy just poured this. I want it torn out, and redone." I just I never do it. And you could have that rule too if you want. You know, it's the way you want to run your own business. That's why you own it. From my experience, it's a can of worms and I don't want anything to do with it. But he said the right things to me and he was a class act and so was his wife. 100%. So we're going to rod this sideways. You saw the 4x4 four four set on the inside. See, I, the new design, another design I'm doing is a longer planner and skinnier. In them. I tried to put three in there. But the third one up by the door already had the bush hanging over, so it didn't work. But I really wanted opposite planters up each step, up three of them. But it didn't jive, so that's what we got. And when you got a pump, I mean, that's anyone who shows up without a pump and they're and they're doing it any other way, they're they're it takes them so long to place the concrete. They're chasing the concrete. We set it down so fast, we're waiting on it. There's a huge difference. And you, if, you, if you don't pump it in, you're not doing work at this level. It's impossible. Not only most people are incapable of doing it. or do, They're capable, they just haven't learned. And you can make money doing patios, driveways. I mean, God bless you. Whatever you want to do, there's lanes for it all. So if you do patios, driveways, sidewalks, and you make a living, you don't need to do stuff. I just have a desire to try and do things that challenges me and I want to do crazy stuff and like where people are blown away that's just the way I am personally you don't have to be that way there's lanes for everybody you know I can do any single job that's possible probably and that's just the way that I wanted to be at it but originally I just wanted to do sideway walks and patios I'm like these are cool these are easy money not too bad I got my own demo I demo it myself pump it but I just kept being at all these high-end houses out here so this is like normal you know but if you're in other places how are you gonna learn it when this isn't the norm you know what I mean who knows how to do it that's the thing I get calls all over the world I mean a thousand calls I'd be lying on those other floating steps where I consulted their contractor they had and, I, and we did um, FaceTime and I guided them through a bunch of them at least 10 of those and then I've gotten calls all over where they want to fly me out there to do it but I'm not leaving. There's a walking edger here. I mean, you got to have the right tools. When you watch West Coast, you can see everything. Even if you're a consumer or a homeowner and you're going to hire somebody, you can watch this. And you know by the way they're doing it, the way the forms look, the way they demo it. You know, the guy showed up with a jackhammer. And I told the homeowner, Charles, that's the first sign. And he goes, oh, I know. Believe me. You know. It just looks like a bunch of tweakers with a jackhammer. It's not necessarily true, but that's how the consumers look at it. You got to do what you got to do. You got to start somewhere, you know. And maybe the guy was just starting out who did this prior. See, I got three top guys on here. I got Javier, Milton Jr., and Senior. And they were they were killing it for 
three hours straight. That's how much detail this takes. Five days to do five and a half yards. And another um, fatal mistake the guy made, he poured them all and he locked all the forms in. And you're not getting them out. And he, I, he came and broke the ledge off one of them by pounding the 4x4 four four or the 2x4, however he did it. I think he doubled 2x4s two, two, two up. If you see my video and listen to it, you, you can use a 4x4. Four four. That's what we use all the way around. So this is exposed all the way around. It's all faced. It's all top casted. And we did it with the 4x4, four four, the way the yard goes. The um, mulch and stuff they put in there for the plants go up to part of it. And then you can see the step on. You'll see the elevation we did on the side of it at the end. I give you a money shot on it. Here's top cast here. What you do when it's ready after you steel troweled it and you've killed it a couple times and edged it and, and did everything you're going to do, you spray this white milky substance on it called top cast and it retards the top and then you hose it off and it gives a sand finish. It exposes the sand. There's at least 10 different levels of top cast. There's number five, no, number one, number three, number five. Number 15 will expose a little aggregate. They have full ones that will expose all the aggregate. Number three is a lighter, more of an acid etch. That will just expose the sand, which is the look in California, what everyone uses. Stamping and all that, no one does that out here. I never get calls for that. I don't even really see it being done very much. You know, who wants to seal it and you know have a maintenance of resealing it and the color fades out? It looks terrible. Ten years, this will look incredible. I stay away from colors and all that stuff, and I take all the additives out. In this load, I put a splash of retardant in it. I love doing steps and stairs with retardant in it because when you peel it, it peels like butter. But Javier told me, don't put it in the next load, so I didn't put it in. And this, these pilasters weren't square. You can see to the right where we had to jog it out a couple inches because if you would have put the joint corner to corner, it would have been you know, crooked. It, they didn't line up, so we stuck that out about two inches that side to get the step perfectly straight and the and the joint right there so you can see the right where it sticks out that thing was really crooked i mean really off wasn't square at all and you can see the other poles too i don't know who did them but or what year year this house was built this house is probably 60 something i would guess and we got junior on this killing us you wait till you guys see the finish on this this is why i want to what i want to represent myself as the top of the line on youtube the top on my area wherever I'm at this is what I'm going home for I have a lot of pride in what I do and you could do any level and have pride in it you could do regular sidewalks and do a good job or patio it's it's fine you know this stuff is takes a different animal to do it's tricky the layout the elevations um, the whole thing there's there's a host of things that could go wrong stripping it's tricky you got to leave it open so you can pull the board in front and then when we pour the second two, you'll really be intrigued by the setup, how we did it. We overlap it on it with the one by one by four with the foam underneath it. We just use the 3M spray adhesive. You can't see it coming together yet, but once the other one's formed up and poured, you'll see it. And yeah, these guys are just tooling this, edging it. This is the A plus, A plus work. Yeah, I could work in any neighborhood, Malibu, Beverly Hills, Newport Coast, anywhere I go. And I could work at regular track houses or whatever, but I'm geared to go anywhere like I'm demoing this week coming up like two or three demo jobs or I'm just demoing it for another contractor and I got a pool deck I'm going to demo and pour and then I got another 11 yards in another city of flat work patio and sidewalk so there's all different things but I'd like to get about five sets of these up what I want to do is I want to get a, a set where the house is crowned way up from the sidewalk and I can do seven or eight um, wedding cake floating steps with a landing and then five or six up to the front door with a landing i've done a set but it was at an a level above a level celebrity's house and he made me sign a confidentiality thing where i couldn't say his name or, or video anything so you know he paid me what i wanted and he wouldn't let me film it so what am i going to do and he was adamant about not saying his name so there's a finish there look at that sand wash look how clean that looks any imperfections or trial marks it takes it right out these guys washed it with a with a really, really soft broom. I always have a medium broom when I did it. And then I had a heavy one, and I'd scrub the crap out of it. But it was so hot this day, I couldn't believe it when they pulled those brooms out. I said, you're out of your mind. And he goes, oh, no. Javier said, no, it's fine. And I said, all right. And it washed right off perfectly. Maybe it was so hot out. 
The second pour, we watched it earlier, an hour. This was a two-hour. So you pour it, you edge it, you do everything. you got to wait about two hours. That's why we were there. But either way, it, it makes for a long day, you know. I, one day I left at 4.30. I never worked that late. See, the 4x4, four four we can pull it the next day when we come to set up. If you pour this all in one day, it's it's just catastrophic. You're done. <laughs> Warm up the bobcat because it's coming out. You cannot get the wood out. If you look at the last video, the, the he, he broke the ledges. He took some out, but some was left in. See how we overlap it? That's how we're going to get the floating. And we're going to put a 1x4 flat right there in front of that 2x4 with the foam underneath glued to it. So when we pull that 4x4, four four, it's off to the side and we can just wiggle it out. You know, just wait three or four days and it'll come right out. So the, so the concrete's not so green or soft where you chip or break an edge because then, oh my God. Because, I mean, that thing's hanging over three and a half inch hangover. But Javier is a master that you'll ever see. On, I mean, these YouTubers, he could just take them to school like kindergartners. Milton, too, my whole crew. My labors are better than most people you'll see. And that's just a fact. That's just from a business perspective. It's not bagging or picking on anyone. It's, it's, that's just a fact. And the stuff I'm putting up, I mean, this thing is just beautiful. I don't want to take too much attention away from this job with rhetoric but this this thing i was really proud of this because how important it was to the people and then you know sometimes you want to do the best job you could ever do and the one in the million because you want to come out for a family member or a friend and it screws up but i wasn't even sweating it i was really confident a bunch of guys from youtube came out and checked this out and you know it was a good opportunity it was nice meeting them and it was a good opportunity for them to see something of this level the end shot is just straight money. And you got to plastic the pour off because you're going to wash it again. And you don't want to get the cream on top of the fresh poured concrete. So we had to plastic everything off. Because when you spray the top cast and stuff, it stains. Like if you get it on those pilasters or pillars, whatever you want to call them, or the side of the house or on the house or whatever. It stuff's a pain in the ass to get off. So we're just going to plastic it off. Javier had that crazy sprayer. I don't even know how he used it. But you want a Hudson, a metal one. But he sprayed it perfect, and you want to put it on heavy. Rule of thumb for me, a one five-gallon bucket does 800 square feet, but Javier says he uses a, a five and a half, five, one five-gallon and another half, but I use a one bucket for 10, uh, 800 square feet. Excuse me. I'm tongue-tied today. So we got the pump here. We got a, it's probably two and a half yards. I just ordered three. It's probably two yards. Yeah, two and a half, and I ordered like three or three and a half. I'm not, and you got to put the pump wash in the wheelbarrow, and then a uh, big D right there helps me throw it in the pump when I'm washing out because there's nowhere on this property to put it. We're running about a five slump on this, no retardant. I want to put one percent in it, but he, uh, Javier shut it down, so I assume he knows what he's doing. He runs all the guys and my layout, and he schedules them and all that, so I just he does what he does. I don't really question him, and he doesn't question me. It's weird when I used to freak out, and he would say, like, oh, Anthony, calm down. Now it's just his body language. He, I look at him, and he gives me, like, this certain look, like we have telepathy. We don't even need to talk to each other. That's how in sync we are. And to be in sync with a guy like that is a, is, is a good deal. I'm just lifting this up as we go. You got to have it perfect. You can't have it too high. It can't move or off the edge where it cracks the edge when you pull the form. So you got to be really careful. It's bacon this day. We are in Walnut, California, Los Angeles County. Uh, 60 Freeway and I don't remember the exit. No, Gallus, I believe. Something like that. It's LA County, I'm pretty sure. So we're just going to, I just turned on the pump. I'm going to go real slow, real clean. It's only a couple yards. And by the time you wash this, you've, you feel like you've poured 100 yards because you're there all day. And the homeowner was so gracious. He brought out like a canopy and we had it in the driveway and we were sitting underneath it and all the chairs. And we were sitting in the shade. Me and Dee were sitting there most of the time watching these guys in just amazement how talented this crew is. That's the planter right there. You'll see it come together when we strip it all and it's all washed. So I'm just going to leave it a little bit low is better than because if you overfill it and it gets underneath the form, the forms are hard to strip. You got, you got to clean around the perimeter really good. I usually use a hammer or a trowel. If there is any spoils that comes out or overflow, I'll clean it out because you can't get the forms out. 
in the first pour we made a little bit of an error and put the foam on it but you need there's two inches on the bottom that we didn't get where the concrete stuck to it so we had to wiggle cut it with a sawzall and then the second pour javier put the foam all the way down around the planter i'm, I'm talking about and it just went pulled right up i didn't have it on camera though when we when we use the sawzall to, to strip it he got there earlier than me and just pulled it out so that's an inch and a quarter gap so what we're going to get underneath that really really give it an illusion of a floater so when you're standing out on the on the street and you can't see underneath it it gives the illusion each piece is separate not all tied together as one piece and with a three and a half inch gap it's far enough back where you can't really see underneath it so it looks like it that's how, why they call them floating steps which these are the most elegant sleek looking entryway you'll ever see the other guy the celebrity guy house i did those those wedding cakes were just Wedding cake floating steps were my favorite, but I can't show it to you guys, but this is really nice. 100 degree day, pump it out of five, five and a half. You don't have to worry about it. You could even do a little wetter. You just don't want it to billow underneath where you can't get the forms out. Everything has to have detail with this. You have to be so detail oriented that you'll, you'll screw yourself. One screw up will ruin the whole job. Big D's gonna be a concrete contractor, so he's out here coming to all my jobs. Super good marketer, smart dude, business guy. And um, my camera girl, I filmed this and my friend, so you guys, she's back at school, so if the filming's not the greatest, it, you hand a guy with ADD, HD a camera, what do you expect? So check out my camera girl, my media assistant, Sydney Ray 5 on Instagram. S Y D N E Y Ray R A Y O five support her. She's just a young girl and still in high school. She does all figured all all this out for me and takes care of everything for me. She's awesome. So support her on Instagram. She's the kind of people you need to support. So this day we'll be spraying it. The timing's a real issue. I wish I could. I should have touched it to show you when you spray it. But I didn't think about it because my brains were cooking because it was 100 degrees out here. And I'm not used to that kind of heat. I need an ocean breeze. And of course, the day we put the plastic, we've been sitting out here roasting. A wind breeze came in and kept blowing it up. So Javier wet the concrete and we stuck it down to it. But I was like, you got to be kidding me. And it felt good. But I was like, man, where's this been? See how much tooling and edging and... You, you just have to get it perfect. When you're going to say you can do floating steps and you come out and do it, they really, really got to come out nice. I have a different eye, so I see a couple things. But Topcast isn't the most consistent product you're going to use. You got to really know what you're doing. You got to wash it right. You got to spray it right. You got to spray it heavy is a good key. There's a lot of things you can use. You can use sugar, like one pound per one gallon. We got to be really quick because it'll expose the aggregate too fast you got to really to sand wash you got to really stay on it and jump on it you can use any kind of soda really that has sugar in it mountain dew dr pepper coca-cola any of that stuff sugars are retardant to concrete too like if a mixer broke down with a load they just start chucking bags of sugar in the back because it'll retard the load if the drunk you know they're stuck and they got the mechanic trying to fix it and it's there's a there's concrete in there and the drum won't move or the truck won't move either one they just start chucking bags of sugar in it so it's the same concept on the concrete it'll retard it and wash it off if i'm doing an exposed aggregate i'll use sugar because it, it takes it, this does a really fine job of just etching about a 16th off the top where you only get the sand and they've troweled it bowl floated so i've knocked the rocks down a little farther so if you use sugar and it's going all the way down the rock it, it's retarded more than a 16th of an inch you see that right there to where that 4x4 is, the dirt's going to go, then that part of the step is exposed. And they had this thing landscaped up really quick, so you guys are going to get see it with the plants, washed, the whole bit. These redo in the yard next week, but um, yeah, it looked really nice, but I wasn't going to wait, so I mainly was just focusing on this. And then I was really cool that he had the, so customers can see it landscaped, the job I did. He had a landscaper do it. I mean, these guys are on this three hours straight in 100 degree heat. This is how good 
you have to get everything perfect. And you got me walking around looking at everything. You know, so if they, they never usually miss anything. I've never caught them, but I'm eagle-eyeing it the whole time. That's part of my job because it's under my name. And you got to really delegate the guys perfectly. And, you know, most guys come out with two guys to pour two this, but it's just too much and you don't want to kill your guys. You know, you're going to, when you're pricing jobs like this, this is like 25, 26K to do an entry like this. And there's some other ones that could be 50, 100, 150, depends on the side of the mansion, the, the house in some of these areas. So I want to specialize in this. I'll probably have like landscape architects calling me and stuff when they have extravagant entries. I'll be the guy for it. So he's spraying it now. Next time I'll touch it and I'll, I'll zoom on my finger so you can see what a, what how tight it is when we spray it. But in this kind of heat, that's the thing. There's so many variables. In the winter, I would wash it the next day with a with a power washer. And then, I mean, I've had to use wire brushes to get this crap off sometimes. It adheres and bonds different in all kinds of different situations. It's not that tricky. I'm not trying to complicate it, but... I've, I've done miles of, of top casts and I've had different experiences and that's why I started sandblasting it because I, I mean profit margin what I'm getting I don't want to sit here all day and wash this stuff so I was like you know I just call my buddy Sean I've known forever and have him sandblasted which is basically the same exact finish maybe a little bit more consistent but this is as consistent the one we did here as any sandblast I've seen so it's arbitrary too what depends what you want how much money you have on the job 200 to 250 dollars for five gallons so if you guys are in other states and you bring this to your state i mean you can order it but the trick is it's three parts in it so you have to shake it really good we just put it upside down for a couple hours before we shake it and then we shake it for like five minutes if you don't shake it well it won't wash good it's really tricky not tricky but you better shake it see that's why we put the plastic because it's obviously going to run downhill and we have these two little dirt things so none of it go leaves the property the dirt sucks it up and we just start using the minimal amount of water there's a little funky spot right there for some reason and I just rubbed the crap out of it and got it out they wanted me to stay away from it but I fight fire with fire it went down a little too far right there so I just rubbed it out and evened it out it came out perfect you guys are gonna love the end of this stick around to the end that's the first day of the day we finished and then I'll, you get a money shot check that out Bam. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you need an entryway, call Anthony at West Coast and check Sydney Ray 5 out on Instagram. Look at that entryway. Is that a million dollar entryway or what? Thank you very much for watching The Best in the West. Have a great day.